So I'm Eric Brown. I'm a faculty that's been with the residency since 1990. Uh, prior to that, um, I was the doctor at the Penobscot Nation through the 1980s. Um, trained at the Maine Dartmouth residency down in Augusta, Maine. Um, and prior to that, at, trained at Tufts in Boston. Um, I love Maine for a whole bunch of reasons that we'll show you today. And uh, I've been here obviously for a long time. In fact, I was born here. I was born uh, down in Portland and I've lived a number of places in Maine. So um, I'll leave it at that and let Ray introduce himself. Uh, my name is Ray Baxter. I'm another one of the faculty at uh, the program at Eastern Maine Medical Center in Bangor. Um, I couples matched here with my wife as a resident. We were looking for a small uh, community-based program that uh, we could do as broad a scope of practice as we could and, and Bangor was the fit. Uh, we loved the area. After residency, we got offers to come back to Bangor and we jumped at them because we loved the area and the program and we've been here uh, since. Eastern Maine Medical Center used to be Eastern Maine General and it started, I believe, in the 1890s. Um, this hospital is a really bit of, it's a sort of really a interesting um, setup in the middle of a town of somewhere in the 30,000s. You have a 440 bed facility with, which does everything except uh, transplants. Um, and why would you have that? Well, we at Eastern Maine Medical Center and the Northern Light System cover the upper two thirds of Maine. In fact, we are the origins of the helicopter system that covers all of Northern Maine. Um, so we have a draw of somewhere between 350 and 450,000. Thus, we have a facility that's as big as many Boston hospitals where I was trained. What really attracted me here was that every window of every patient room looks out onto the river, which is on the other side. Being an outdoors person, this really attracted me. I saw it as a very healthy environment to live. So we're now going to go off and uh, we'll show you a little bit of Bangor just to get a sense of what it's like and why we love it. Uh, and here we go. And so uh, what Eric was talking about with how uh, big the hospital is for such a small town is, is pretty much what drew my wife and I here. We had uh, all the specialists that we could want to, to consult on, uh, but with how big a service area that the hospital uh, has, um, it really behooved us to, to not over consult because we, we don't have as many specialists as there's a need. And so they like it if we, you know, don't call them for every little thing. Um, and we handle as much as we can on our own in the clinic and in, um, in the hospital itself. Yeah, in fact, there's an expectation from the specialists that we handle a lot of the preliminary stuff so that their visits are very efficient. And that's a really good training for rural areas. So Bangor uh, was started in the 1800s for its access to the lumber in the Penobscot River Valley. Um, <clears throat> by 1860, it was the largest lumber port in the world and something like 95% of the world's lumber was exported out of Bangor. And so because of that, uh, when lumber was big, it was a, uh, a big economic um, boom for the area. And so you can see the remnants of that with the old Victorian and Greek revival houses that are basically mansions. Um, and then we get kind of a legacy of that with the arts that's here. Um, the Bangor Public Library is a big, beautiful old building uh, with one of the largest old book collections in the world. Um, and then there's uh, a lot of other endowments for the arts. The uh, Bangor Opera House is home to the Penobscot Theater Company. Um, the Bangor Symphony Orchestra is one of the oldest orchestras in uh, the country. Um, and they were you know, endowed by the lumber barons. And so uh, we have a lot of bigger city amenities for being such a small town. And that's something that appealed to uh, my wife and I coming from New York City. Up to the left, we have the, the Bangor Standpipe, which is the longest continuous uh, water tower in the country. It's, it was built in 1804 and it's a huge center cylinder of, of metal going up uh, about four stories or five stories, uh, surrounded by air and then surrounded by wood. They used to fill it with sawdust to keep it from freezing. Right now we're going over the Kanduskeg stream. It's, um, there's a nice stream side park 
uh, that goes up it. And then in the spring runoff, there's the Great Kanduske Canoe Race. It's 16 miles of white water and flat water, and uh, people come from all over, including Canada. Uh, and it can be very fast because there can be very high runoff. Um, there's usually still snow on the ground in the woods, so if you go over, which many people do, it's very refreshing, we might say, in Maine. And there's a wide range of the type of people that go. Uh, there's the really competitive canoe racers, and then there's people in, like, duck costumes. And so if you wanted to, you could join it. Uh, and then now we're going up the Thomas Hill Road to see the Thomas Hill Standpipe. You can see the windows going around it. Those are the uh, stairways, the, the stairway to go up it. Yeah, a lot of people will run up here, and this will be part of their, their sort of heartbreak hill, because as you can see, it commands sort of a view of all the Bangor, and it's a, a good little climb as you run it. Uh, a lot of bikers come up through here. Um, Bangor streets are very amenable for running, biking, it's quite safe. And the housing, as you can see, it's an older housing stock in this area, uh, really beautiful. The woodwork um, is incredible because a lot of woodworkers from all over the world came here. Uh, the parquet floors and the filigree all around the different windows are amazing uh, because people took real pride in their homes and did a lot of work on them. And we just passed uh, Mansfield Stadium. That stadium is being, has been used for the senior uh, league uh, championships from around the world. You know, you'd have people from Japan and other places playing the senior league uh, World Series. And uh, it was pretty amazing because the community saw it as a really large part of their connection with the world. And it was amazing how, how it was all done by volunteers, the whole series. Uh, right now I'm turning into our clinic. We um, do a number of procedures, vasectomies, toenail removals, um, all sorts of skin and gynecologic procedures. And then down the hall is a walk-in care that you can uh, do rotations at. There's orthopedic surgery, ear, nose, and throat surgery. Um, there's imaging and a lab draw station. Um, and it is a nice uh, patient-centered medical home. Um, that we get to be a part of. The Bangor Airport here on the left is um, the longest uh, and largest runway in the whole Northeast. There's direct flights to New York, Charlotte in the um, peak season, DC, Chicago, and then you can get to some of the Florida airports too and it is, it's remarkably convenient. The other thing that is amazing is that when you're getting on a plane, my, my sons would drive me crazy because they go 45 minutes before the flight and just get on and- uh, Oh, I showed up 15 minutes once. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, it's just the lines aren't like any other airport so that you can actually get on really quickly um, and you don't wait hours. You really don't have to spend three hours getting there early to, to do what you have to do. Also across the street is the Penobscot Community Health Center, which is a uh, health manpower shortage area uh, community center, um, which is made up of a lot of our residents who have graduated, um, who have made a huge dent in some of the poverty care because they and us at the residency take care of a huge population, uh, including our, for instance, our population is 90% Medicare, Medicaid, or no pay. And so we're, 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 we and they are part of the safety net and we work collaboratively So right now we're still in Bangor. You can see that there's a, a bunch of city parks. Um, Bangor does a very nice job of having uh, city, city parks that have good walking trails and cross country uh, skiing trails in the winter. And many of them connect because there's a whole very adequate rails to trails program. You literally can connect with hundreds of miles, including out west towards Canada and north towards Canada. Uh, there's a thing called the Sunrise Trail that connects with some of this. That's a, a 600, I believe a 600 mile trail that goes all through Maine uh, into northern uh, uh, Massachusetts, in fact. Um, so very outdoor oriented as far as keeping people active um, and it's well supported by the community. So Acadia National Park is uh, just absolutely beautiful. I don't know how many hundreds of miles of hiking trails there are, but we go probably once to twice a month 
over the last seven years and still haven't hit all of them. Then there's uh, Baxter State Forest is about three hours away. No, no, no. It's actually an hour and 45 minutes to the gate. We're also uh, an hour and 45 minutes from Sugarloaf. Uh -huh. uh, Sugarloaf is one of the areas that's well known for skiing, but also there are a lot of the hiking trails and the Bigelows and the White Mountains of Maine. There's also a local mountain called Herman Mountain. It's uh -huh. about 800 or 1,000 feet with a chairlift, and uh, it has about four different trails for all different levels of skier, and it's a family operation, so if you want to learn to ski, uh, literally their kids teach you. You know, that's that's where I learned to ski. Seriously? I did, yeah. I didn't I... know that. So I think Ray's gonna bring you through another part of Bangor here, which is, um, again, one of the older communities with some of the larger homes um, that are up adjacent to the golf course. Uh, there are lots of, uh, <laughs> Lots of golf courses around the greater Bangor. Every little town has its golf course. So if you're into golf, it's great. If you're into cross-country skiing, the golf course is second is a great cross-country skiing area too. And we're doing a drive-by by Stephen King's house. And Stephen King is a major player here. You'll notice there's a tree that was taken down there and it's been made into an amazing sculpture. Um, and Stephen had this fence done uh, by somebody from the area and it's all hand done wrought iron. And you'll notice that it has all sorts of interesting figures on it, including you know, sort of bats and uh, spiders and that sort of stuff. And that's interesting. There's a black cat. There's a black by the way. cat, yeah. <laughs> um, only that's Stephen funny. King. Oh, Stephen King does anything to make us interested. Um, I've actually been on a plane with Stephen King because a lot of times he'll ride uh, the regular coach. Uh, and I asked him why. And he said to me, because sitting next to people like me gives them great ideas. The Shaw House is on the left with the Rainbow Stairs, which is a um, homeless shelter specifically for teens and young adults. I believe their cutoff is 21. And we're the um, medical directors for that site. And so uh, the residents will go and do uh, home visits at the shelter. And then we'll also see uh, the patients at the clinic if they need a procedure or something. Um, and it's a, it's a great experience. And our integrated behavioral health goes a long way to helping with that. And to the right is the Cross Center, which is a 56 or $60 million facility that has an amazing uh, music venue as well as plays. Um, you know, off-Broadway stuff comes here or things like, you know, James Taylor or some yeah. fairly big venues, especially during the winter months. Yeah. Uh, and across the street is the Hollywood Casino and the Hollywood Casino taxes pay for the Cross Center. Other things that are here, we're, we're about to come to the Bangor Waterfront, which has a music venue called Waterfront Music. Um, and it has all the major players. We've seen Sting, Dolly Parton, um, Train, Ben Folds, Five. We've seen so many good acts and they're very cheap. The waterfront here is about a mile and a half long and there's a mirrored waterfront on the other side in Brewer. And that's walkable, bikeable, and cross-country skiable. And lots of people like us will walk our dogs and all that. Um, down in the back, there's a, uh, a, a big berm that was built, and they used to have um, Shakespeare on the waterfront uh, by the Penobscot Theater uh, at one point. There's a public boat launch here, and then actually there's a, Bangor has a marina. Uh, the interesting thing, so this is still a tidal river, and the tide is dramatic. It's, it's about 15 feet um, at its most. Right now we're driving into downtown Bangor and um, there are a number of very nice restaurants. Three coffee houses in downtown Bangor and they're all great. And then we have a very nice tea room, an English tea room. Uh, there's a lot of yoga studios, including Bikram and Aerial Yoga, if that's what you're interested in. And then downtown Bangor has a lot of little eclectic shops you can get pretty much everything done in downtown Bangor. So for local brews, there's Sea Dog, um, Gagans, Two Feet Brewing, uh, Orono Brewing Company, Black Bear Brewing Company, uh, Marsh Island Brewing Company. There's loads of it in the area. 
Downtown Bangor is home to the Bangor Savings Bank, Key Bank, uh, Camden National Bank all have corporate headquarters here. Um, and then uh, there's a lot of uh, federal and county offices as well. So we're going on Route 202 into Hamden, which is one town south of Bangor, and it has a population of about 6,000, lots of farms. Um, Hamden is sort of a bedroom community, uh, but it's a regional area so that uh, its schools are the regional schools for four different towns. Very nice homes. Again, they're not that expensive, um, but uh, most of them are on an acre of land. The schools surrounding Bangor and Bangor um, have uh, at least we all felt that our kids were well-trained and many of our kids have gone to some of the best schools and have not felt behind. Um, the uh, Hamden School sorry. Cluster is, a, is a, a cluster of schools that are elementary all the way to high school. The high school was built and the community saw fit to, to give extra money so that it would have a long-term um, lower footprint. So it's all um, geothermal um, heating and that means it has cooling, which many of the high schools don't have in Maine. It's, it's really amazing, it's really efficient, and in fact, the physics department has all the controls for the, both the solar and um, uh, geothermal units, so, so the kids use it as part of their teaching. It's really impressive, and it's really cool. So the other thing is we have um, in Bangor, you know, a couple um, universities as well. There's Husson, you, you will be going through the University of Maine later. Eastern Maine uh, Community College, uh, but there's all sorts of uh, really practical courses you can take if you want to learn how to do things like EMT or other types of um, uh, hands-on uh, skills. So the other thing about Husson that's notable is they have a very active pharmacy school. Yes. And we have a clinical pharmacist embedded in our clinic um, who has students and pharmacy residents with her. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun to work with them and it's very helpful. And we're going up to a place called Pushaw Lake. It's nine miles by five miles, so it's a pretty good size. Um, it's a great place to go skating, uh, to go canoeing and kayaking. Um, and I used to take some of the residents there. There are a number of islands there. Uh, I give the residents extra points if they live by a lake that we can play on. Yeah. There's a whole necklace of lakes, rivers, and streams that are accessible and people can live here. Now we're driving into VZ. Uh, VZ, Orono, Old Town, they all have uh, public parks that all join each other and will attach onto the, uh, the Bangor uh, City Forest and the land trusts that, um, that abut it. And so there's just loads of hiking trails and there's a rail trail that goes from uh, VZ out to, how, how far does that go? Oh, that goes for actually, you know, 50 miles. You can actually go on, you know, all the way and it interconnects. Coming up on the right is the Penobscot Country Club. This country club has beautiful views. It's an awesome cross-country ski area. So a lot of us will just pop out here and cross-country ski in the afternoon. We're coming into uh, Orono and Orono is the university's uh, town. And uh, you know, the university is, I don't know, I think 14,000 counting all its, um, it's the flagship university. So it has all the, the major graduate programs. Um, and uh, with that, this town supports the university and a lot of people live here who work at the university. Um, a lot of people who work at the hospital live here. We're about five minutes north of the hospital. Orono is a very nice little town um, with a little downtown. Uh, they have their own theater company called the Ten Buck Theater Company that they'll put on plays in an old uh, one-room schoolhouse. Yeah, so we're going to go on the main entrance of the University of Maine. We're going to take you through um, because there's actually a lot to offer for young people that are young professionals here. Um, one is there's actually courses that are available to spouses, and we've had a number of spouses actually get their masters or PhDs here. So we're coming upon the Collins Center for the Arts, which is the original center for the arts for this area of Maine. Um, and it has an eclectic group of things that play here from the uh, Chinese acrobats to wonderful artists and music. We saw the Russian ballet here. And the Russian ballet and other things. It's amazing. Uh, and we're going along here to all the different stadiums. Uh, we have been the uh, sports medicine um, physician types that have been helping out with that. It's part of our osteopathic program. Well, we're the, we're the team physicians for 
uh, all of the sports teams. As a resident, you can go and cover the um, the games, um, which is a lot of fun. You do you know lack repairs and assess for concussions. Um, and I think what's remarkable about it is, is because of that, um, our sports medicine rotation is really closely affiliated with the university and it's division one athletics. So while we don't have a sports medicine fellowship, we have a very rigorous sports medicine educational component. So now we're moving up towards Old Town. Uh, Old Town is the next community up here is another part of the um, Penobscot Community Health Center, which took over a whole school, uh, which is again, allowing a better access for the poverty communities north of here. The access to care in the areas north and east of here is uh, a big issue that we face uh, being the providers at the tertiary care hospital. So um, the, for the women that live uh, north of us, uh, the next hospital that does um, that does deliveries uh, and prenatal care is uh, how many hours away? It's Holton, mm -hmm. so two hours away. And then east of us, um, some women will drive uh, three hours to get to Bangor to deliver. Um, and uh, it, it really is a healthcare desert, um, especially when you're talking about um, substance use disorder and obstetrics. And obstetrics. We're gonna show you how we're connected because Route 95 goes all the way up here in Northern Maine. So this is where we can connect to 95. So if you live up here, it's literally 10 minutes to the hospital because you zip down at 75 miles an hour uh, because that's the speed limit. And you'll see that the traffic is amazingly sparse. Oh, and it's so it's, it's very nice. Yeah, so right now we're running kind of parallel to the river. So the slow ride that we did up um, is very quick. We'd be back at the clinic and 10 minutes or so. So we're entering the Bangor City Forest, um, which is a very popular um, spot to walk through. There's a circumferential trail in just the forest part that is about four and a half miles or so. Then there's trails crisscrossing, which I believe makes about nine miles of trails altogether. And from the residency, it's about three and a half miles. So it's very accessible that some people actually do some stuff at noon if you have nothing else going on. Yeah, it's, um, it's a, I love coming here. It's a great place. Um, living here, it's a, there's so much to do outdoors in the, um, in all seasons. Um, uh, and then it, one of the things about winter here is you have to either like being completely holed up or, um, or getting out in the cold. It does get cold, but in February and January when it's really cold, it's bright blue skies and sunny days and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. So we're coming in to um, what we both consider the ugly but necessary side of Bangor, uh, where all the big box stores are and you can get anything you need. We have Walmart, we have Target, Bed Bath & Beyond, yep. Chick-fil-A and Chipotle, um, and both of those have some sort of uh, superlative about being the only one in New England or the northernmost or something. Yeah, so we got about a mile and a half strip of all the box stores you could ever want. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna go by um, actually one of our sister organizations, that's the Acadia Hospital, which is our psychiatric hospital. Um, it also is one of four methadone clinics. Um, Bangor was one of the epicenters of oxycodone craze, and so we have a very high per capita deaths due to inadvertent overdose. Uh, the other nice thing about Acadia is it's home to the Mood and Memory Clinic. And um, so part of your geriatrics rotation, you'll go and work with um, Dr. Singer, who is um, a, just an excellent teacher and I think uh, a leader in his field. We're gonna be going uh, past two big um, parks. They, uh, you know, have just have a big public space and then in the winter they'll freeze over a, a portion and have ice skating. And this is pretty typical for all the neighborhoods in Bangor. There's just big uh, city parks in the middle of the neighborhoods and they're, they're very pretty. 
So, I think we're at the end, and we'll be coming over this hill and seeing Eastern Maine Medical Center, and um, I did think we were going to be funnier, but I don't know, I think we <laughs> <laughs>